Following a lengthy discussion on mandates, Scottsbluff County commissioners have added their voices to the chorus of healthcare and other frontline employees asking the public to use a mask to help battle COVID. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, the Scottsbluff County Commissioners wrestled with masking issues on Monday night, discussing the legalities and efficiency of such a move. Chair Ken Meyer said state law did not give counties the authority to mandate mask usage. And while he wondered whether such a move would be met with more compliance or increased resistance among some area residents, he said people need to understand the virus threat is real and take personal responsibility. We have a hospital setting up here that is full of patients. And they're getting fuller every day. We have a hospital administrator that is pleading with our community that we need to do something. We as politicians can't fix this, folks. We can't wave a magic wand and make it go away. Scottsdale County Health Director Paulette Schnell said approval of the resolution would not fix the pandemic, but it would help by supporting a united message from health care and government officials. We are at a point where we can still do something to change this around. But if we don't, we are going to be overwhelmed as a health system from public health to doctor's offices to hospitals. And we have a chance now still that we can do something, but it has to take some action now. The board approved a slimmed down resolution emphatically asking county residents to wear a mask and follow the recommendations of public health to avoid the three C's, saying they were concerned that the emphasis on mask wearing would be lost if too much language was added to the message. And our neighbors to the west today already taking action as Goshen County has implemented a mandatory mask mandate until at least December 4th. By and large, people will be required to wear a mask at any business or building with some exceptions. The mandate does not apply to minors. However, children age three and older are encouraged to wear a mask whenever possible. More information on the mandate can be found by going to this story on our website at KNEB.com. Well, straight ahead, Bill Boyer's in with your midweek forecast. Love that right after this on KNEB.TV News. At Platte Valley Bank, we offer loans with competitive rates and quick decisions from our experienced lenders. Our team works hard to get to know you and your business. From ag to auto, home loans and everything in between, we're here to help. Stop by Platte Valley Bank or apply online to find the loan that is right for you today. For the past 44 years, Platte Valley Vacuum and Sewing has been serving the Wyo, Nebraska area. That's quite a long time. At Platte Valley Vacuum and Sewing, you'll find quality sewing machines, quilting and embroidery machines, even sergers from name brands such as Foff and Baby Lock, both known for their well-made machinery. Keep in mind you'll receive one-on-one -on -one lessons with your machine purchase. Platte Valley Vacuum and Sew also offers a fine selection of 100% cotton quilting fabrics and a great selection of threads and notions to assist you in most any quilting or embroidery project you might have. For all your sewing machine quilting needs, stop by Platte Valley Vacuum and Sew, downtown Scotts Bluff. This is KNEB.TV Weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Across the area tonight, we're going to be dealing with partly cloudy skies, temperatures falling into the low 40s. Yes, I said 40s overnight, upper 30s and low 40s. That's all the cooler we're going to get. Windy conditions coming our way tomorrow. It is going to be cooler for the weekend. That has not changed, but unfortunately, our chances of precip has changed as 
activity looks like it's not going to be as widespread here across the region and certainly lots of question marks for next week. 67 was our high yesterday, nothing in the rain gauge as we remain well below normal for the month and year. As you look across the region, we just have high wind warnings left in effect for tomorrow, and this is going to be in the wind-prone area. We do expect another round of some very strong and gusty winds uh, in those areas where we do expect uh, high wind warnings between Laramie and Cheyenne, uh, wind-prone areas of southeastern Wyoming. Very nice conditions out there tonight. Look at these temps. Still in the 60s in some areas. Yeah, upper 50s and low to mid 60s. Uh, 64 Cheyenne and Tor or Wheatland and Torrington. It's 54 uh, degrees in Kimball. Only 49, just a touch cooler there around Sydney. Winds are out of the southwest right now and uh, in the 5 to 15 mile an hour range at most. As we take a look at our bus stop forecast for tomorrow, we're going to get on the bus at 41 degrees on our way home. It'll be about 60, but it looks like we're going to be certainly a lot more in the way of uh, windy tomorrow across the area. Future cast as we go through the evening hours tonight, clear, nothing going on out there, uh, quiet conditions, and it's going to be comfortably mild for this time of year. Low temperatures only falling off into the upper 30s and low 40s out there. Very, very comfortable for uh, this time in November. Tomorrow we start the day with some sunshine. We'll bring a few areas of clouds through, hit and miss at times along that frontal system. Then winds are going to pick up here across the region. We do expect it to be windy. And then the winds will slack off late tomorrow night, but it is going to be a little cooler and certainly more noticeably windy tomorrow. High temperatures in the 60s. Notice we're saying cooler, but still in the 60s for tomorrow. We don't expect anything in the way of rain or snow out here over the next couple of days either. Taking a look at our forecast then for tonight, partly cloudy, seasonably mild, lows down around 40. For tomorrow, there's the sun and clouds at times, and it's going to be windy as well. Winds 20 to 30, could see some gusts 40 to 45 at times. Highs near 62. Our seven-day forecast, we bring about 50 on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So cooler for the weekend, but notice not as cooler as not as cool as what we had originally said. And then next week, lots up in the air here on the forecast as we get closer to Thanksgiving. But right now, we'll keep uh, things dry and temperatures in the 50s. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full-service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant, and full-service gas leader. The Verizon family is full of frowns because they're spending too much for their unlimited data and phones, while the Viero family is all smiles because they're getting four lines of unlimited data with two free Apple iPhone SE for mom and dad and two free LG K31 smartphones for the kids, all for just $100 a month. They're saving so much, they're able to get Fido. Find out how you can too at Viero.com or your nearest Viero store. Viero Wireless, keeping you connected. Changing leaf colors means yard work. Your friends at Tri-City Stormwater wants to remind you of the proper way to dispose of fallen leaves. Leaves make great mulch for trees and bushes and compost for future gardens. The city also has yard waste bins, so they can dispose of all your leaves at the city compost facility. Always keep your leaves out of the gutters. Not only do they cause clogging and flooding, they can pollute our waterways by causing nutrient overload. So keep your yard looking good and your drinking water safe, because it's our water, our responsibility. Welcome back. In recent weeks, Governor Pete Ricketts has invited Nebraskans affected by the coronavirus to speak at his briefings about their experiences. Yesterday, it was University of Nebraska Foundation staff member Craig Bisher who contracted COVID-19 about two months ago, which led to a nine-day hospitalization. He added his voice urging Nebraskans to wear a mask in public. Because prior to my getting COVID, uh, I'll have to be honest, I didn't necessarily take it real serious. I wore the mask most of the time. I went ahead and felt that uh, I was probably healthy enough that I, could, that I could lick it. It won't be more than a cold because some people uh, had those symptoms and got by real well. Uh, after getting COVID, uh, I'll tell you emphatically that it's something that made me a believer. So you, we all need to make sure that we can do things 
that will help the spread. Prior to his illness, he hadn't been taking the risks of COVID-19 very seriously, adding that one cannot visually tell if someone has COVID-19, which makes responsible health habits all the more important. Well, Unified Command announcing seven additional COVID-related deaths in the Panhandle, bringing the region's total number of deaths to 31. The latest deaths include a Sheridan County woman in her 60s, a Dawes County woman in her 60s, a Dawes County man in his 70s, a Dawes County woman in her 80s, a Cheyenne County woman in her 70s, a Kimball County man in his 90s, and a Morrill County woman in her 90s. PPHD Director Kim Engel says she's deeply saddened to hear of the passing of these residents and wishes their families and friends peace and comfort during their time of loss. And the former finance chief of the Nebraska State Fair has pleaded not guilty to felony theft charges. 29-year-old Patrick Kopke is charged with three counts of felony theft by unlawful taking. A state audit found that a company he created was paid nearly $150,000 in state fair funds, but there was no invoices proving the company did any work for the fair. Auditors allege that he used bank accounts connected to the company to pay more than $100,000 in personal expenses. He has been scheduled for arraignment on Tuesday, but waived the court appearance, and he resigned from the state fair last year. Well, straight ahead, we'll head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society to meet their featured Pet of the Week. They'll meet Buddy right after this. Hey, I've been hanging out here a long time outside of Panhandle Auto Group, and boy, do they have a great selection of vehicles. And their sales team is great to work with, and you can also get your vehicle serviced in detail, too. Welcome to Panhandle Auto. This is Sam Serta, General Sales Manager. It's been our pleasure to serve you for the past two years. At Panhandle Auto, we have a seat for everybody. Whether you need a vehicle for yourself, a son or daughter, our team will go above and beyond to satisfy your needs and even your dreams. So again, thank you from Sam Serta, General Sales Manager at Panhandle Auto, for allowing us to earn your business. At Panhandle Auto, it's time for something different. The holidays are a time to connect with family, with friends, with each other. After a busy year, the holidays are a perfect time for laughing together, playing together, talking together, and celebrating together. Spend time this holiday season connecting with the people that mean the world to you, and let us take care of the connectivity. Home buying is filled with decisions. Neighborhood, floor plan, fenced yard. Make one choice that's easy. Start with FNBO first. We'll guide you home. Home buying is filled with decisions. Square feet, fixer upper, room to grow. Make one choice that's easy. Start with FNBO first. We'll guide you home. Welcome back. For this week's featured pet of the week, we meet Buddy, a cute dog with a whole lot of love to give. So this is Buddy. <laughs> he is a yellow lab mix that came from us from another shelter. Uh, he is a very sweet dog. He's a little timid when you first meet him, um, but once he gets to know you, he is the sweetest thing ever. He is 150, I do believe, and he has all of his shots and rabies, and that's included in the fee, and he's also neutered as well. But yeah, he's, he's just the sweetest boy once you get to know him, and once he gets to know you. Know you. Uh, he's good with other dogs. He's good, good with cats. He has a very healthy respect for cats. And he's just waiting for his forever home. Oh. Yeah, it, it, it took us a while for him to get to trust us, but once, it, once he has, I mean, he loves all of us. So you will get unconditional love with this guy once he gets to know you. Unconditional. To meet Buddy or any of the dogs and cats they have available for adoption, you can head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society during normal business hours. Plus, whoever adopts Buddy will also receive a $25 Murdoch's gift card to start spoiling him right away. Well, straight ahead, take a peek at what's happening around the region on your midweek KNB calendar. KNB.TV News will be back right after this. Small business, you're the engine that makes our communities thrive. That's why we're with you, providing more for you, so you can focus on what matters most.
small business, you're the engine that makes our communities thrive. That's why we're with you, providing more for you, so you can earn more, save more, and do more. Welcome to Kelly's, home of the Valley's best selection of wine, spirits, and beer. Whether you're brand loyal to the tried and true brew or really enjoy trying something different and new, Kelly's has something for everyone. Family owned and operated and right on your way on West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Kelly's Liquor, if you can't find it at Kelly's, it's not worth drinking. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a peek at what's happening on your midweek community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Hi, I'm Michelle Perkins of Remax Regency. After branching out, I've returned home to my roots, to the land from which I came and my family has held for five generations. Michelle truly understands what home means and treats you like family as she guides you through the buying and selling process bringing the latest pricing tools that are not currently being used in this area to sell your home at the highest price in the least amount of time, and to ensure that you do not overpay when buying. So just give me a call, kick back, remax, and settle down. At Platte Valley Investment Center, we believe in personalized planning for your financial goals. As your retirement income partners, our concern for your success combined with resources from Raymond James can help you make confident decisions for your financial future. Our team of financial advisors will help you make your money work just as hard as you did to earn it. After all, our goal is to help you reach your financial goals. Call me, Jody Rosiska, or Kevin Figg, financial advisors, to set up your free, no obligation, pre-retirement review. And finally tonight, two applications recently submitted by the Panhandle Area Development District on behalf of the cities of Scottsbluff and Village of Morrill for rehabilitation of owner-occupied homes has been fully funded in the amounts of $462,500 and $732,500 respectively. The owner-occupied housing rehabilitation funds enable communities to make substantial repairs and improvements to homes on behalf of low and moderate income households not only impacting the lives of individuals and families, 
but can also transform the appearance and vitality of entire neighborhoods. Residents in Morrill or Scotchbluff who own and occupy their homes and also meet the income guidelines are encouraged to apply by calling PAD at 308-436-6584. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. I'll see you here next time.